Good morning, everybody. We are the Talking Hats coming at you on this beautiful Saturday morning. I'm out here in Colorado. Harisha's out there in Northern Virginia, just outside of DC. So we are going to jump, but we've got an action-packed show this week. We're so much so that we're going to break it down into segments here. Um, before we get started, I want to give a, a quick shout out to Jason Bishop, Lurch Papa, the King of Ashburn of the sports junkies out there in the in the DC area. He uh, shot me a text earlier this week to check out, uh, check me out and see how things are going out here in Colorado. So I definitely appreciated him checking on us. Um, hope he's doing well as well. Uh, give us a shout out on the show, Jason. <laughs> That'd be cool. Loyal fans. I actually didn't mention that in the text. If um, if he hits me up again, I definitely will, though, so we can uh, get some exposure for us. Um, <clears throat> but, Harish, um, I didn't tell you this. Uh, we're going to talk about the NFL Combine uh, coming up here in segment one. And little do you know, the uh, this entire segment is actually going to be about the NFL Combine. I've got a guest coming on to talk to us about it. And um, so it, it, I'm telling you that the guest has a combine experience. So um, it, it's gonna end up taking up the whole thing. So that's gonna be fun to get into. But before our guest jumps on with us, we can go ahead and talk about what we've seen and, and get a little back and forth before that, before we jump into that. Yeah, I mean, most of these combine drills for me is just to see how well these God gifted athletes are put together. I mean, it's just some, some individuals God just touched and they just have super speed. The, I believe that the when, when we tweeted out uh, his unofficial time was a four two a wide receiver. Uh, I, I mean, I think it ended up being four three nine. Yeah, I mean at that at that end of the day, like the, if I was going to look at a receiver, I don't care about the forty. I just care if he can run away from the other defenders. I mean that just tells you that you know that he has speed. I mean a four two or a four three is just it's, if you blink of an eye, he's gone. So yeah, it, Cooper Cup uh, his. 40 time wasn't good. Jarvis Landry ran uh, one of the bottom five slowest 40s in the last, uh, I think, since his draft. Right. So uh, 40 time is, it, it matters to, a, to an extent, but it's not a deal breaker by any means. I, mm -mm. You know, and, and what, what, so it's almost like, you know, it, these are like feats of strength. And in my opinion, it, it can, it, it can hurt you or it can help you. And unfortunately, sometimes when, when a, a high draft pick comes in and doesn't do really well in the combine, they automatically say, oh, his stock is going to drop. Why spread that rumor? Why spread that rumor to hurt an individual's um, earning potential? <laughs> well, teams do it for a reason. If, oh, of if course. A team, if a team wants a guy, they'll put some dirt out there to make the guy drop to their position. That happens yeah. every single year. Mm. It's This time of year is lying season. Everybody knows it. Um, some teams still fall for it because some GMs are young. Some coaches are young, inexperienced. They don't know how the game works. Uh, you learn mm -hmm. as, as time goes on, but that's what it's all about. It's all about making a certain guy. So, so you might have extreme interest in a guy, and you might not interview that guy at all because you don't want anybody to know that you're interested in that guy. So think all things – this is just the time of year where it's all about subterfuge, uh, distraction, uh, you know, trying to make your guy fall to your position by any means necessary because it's, it's a big business. You got to do that. Those type of but, things. Is, but aren't you playing a risk factor game, though, no, too, when, when, when you do that? Because to me, it's like if I was doing this, if I was a GM, uh, this yeah. is just Harish speaking. I would interview everybody so they don't know who you're going to get. You, you can't say, I'm going to call in three players, and you automatically know how that, that one of them is going to fall to you. You should just you know, say. The interview thing that I brought up, there was mm -hmm. only one coach in particular that I know of that did that, and I'll get into his name later in the show, mm -hmm. but every coach does it differently. Um, right. like, like I said about the Eagles on, on a previous show, spreading the, the dirt about Deshaun Jackson because yeah. they wanted to get rid of him. It's just right. That's just how it goes. Um, and see, spinning, that's it. Controlling and spinning the message. Right. And that's bad, though, because it's like you have a reputation because you have a name. And when people tarnish your name, that's inexcusable. Inexcusable. Just because you want to like, have them not perform, or, you know, it's their money at the end of the day. I mean, these, these, these athletes, these individuals put their bodies on the line day in and day out. And to spread junk like that is totally not cool and it and it especially happens at the combine because as you said they want people are just greedy but i also feel that strategies needs to shift a little bit into how to evaluate players because 
you can perform amazingly at the combine, get like the number four pick from another team, and you're just not the player they expected. There's a lot of other components, I think, that needs to go into evaluation. And some teams do it. You can tell that some teams, they just look at the combine like, okay, you know, we, you know, you got strength, you got speed, you got vertical and horizontal movement, but what can, what else can you do? What's your character? What, who, who are you as a person? What's your work ethic? And I think that alone can kind of project a, can, can actually tell a lot about a team's, like, you know, how they build a team together. Because if you build that, then like you may not win Super Bowls in the near future, but you can at least build a team to get to get you there. Yeah, and, and evaluating talent, um, I'm looking for if it's if I'm doing it first and foremost, I'm looking for a guy who, if it's quarterback, I want somebody who can fit my system. So I'm looking at how you what system you played in in college. That's why I'm not interested in any Ohio State quarterbacks because their scheme is <laughs> it's not a pro system by any means. Uh, I want a team that sort of kind of plays a, a pro style. It doesn't have to exactly match mine, but I want to know that you can make my throws. I want to know that you can, you can if it's a zone blocking scheme, I want to know that you can sprint out and make those stretch handoffs and things with ease. Not every, anybody can do it, but I want to know that you can get to those spots. We need, the timing has to be there. I want to know that you're coachable. Mm. Uh, Arm talent, I expect everybody who at the combine to be able to make NFL throws. Uh, you might have an extreme level of talent like a Josh Allen or Michael Vick is the strongest arm I ever saw. So you might have that. That's fine. But if, you, if you're not accurate, then I'm not interested in that. I don't care if you can run a 4-2 as a quarterback. I don't. That's not. That's nothing. I want to know that I can coach you to run my scheme is what I'm looking for. So to get back to that, that's a great point you made about arm strength because it gets thrown around a lot in the combine. In the last couple of days, they're like, Oh, Malik Williams has the strongest arm in the quarterback draft. And then they, they and then they say, Oh, this individual picket has the strongest. He's he's more NFL ready. When you when people talk like that, like for me, I'm thinking to myself, what is NFL ready? Like, I mean, you don't know that until he actually goes in and performs. I mean, exactly. is it because because to me, is it, is it the system that they run that they're NFL ready? Because it's almost like you're saying that, oh, they don't know how to read defenses. I mean, come on. Until NFL you... ready, that's just a boilerplate term that people throw out there to either draft or not draft the guy that they want to draft. Um, who Nobody in Dak Prescott's draft was saying he was NFL ready because he mm -hmm. went, what, third round? Yeah, he went third. I think so. Yeah, third. He was NFL ready from day one because he came in and took Tony Romo's job. So, you know, that's like I said, that's just a term they throw out. To, to excuse or, or not excuse picks. It, it doesn't mean anything. You don't know yeah. if a guy's in NFL already until he's in the, in the NFL. But I like to bring up one thing. I do like to see one one thing at the combine is that bench press. 225, how many people can throw it up? And my, and my brother right here threw it up more than some combine individuals that they did. Well, <laughs> he's not in his peak condition yet, but... <laughs> so I haven't lifted in months. Uh, you know, I, we've been traveling around a lot and I, I haven't really settled in anywhere. Um, so I, my workouts have taken a hit. My body's taking a hit due to that too. Um, but I went in yesterday and not even, I didn't even warm up. And I posted a video on our Twitter if y'all want to check it out. You can see how chubby I am now. But um, I put up six reps at 225. I know I could have done more, but I didn't have a spotter. I didn't want to risk either getting hurt or having the weight fall on me or something, you know. But I'm, I'm proud of my six reps. Got to keep building on that. And um, it's not a matter of the strength. I've got the strength. It's just the muscle endurance is the only thing I was worried about. So um, as I keep building, maybe I'll post when I get to 10. <laughs> 10 plus. I, I, I tweeted back out, if you had me as a spot, you would have gotten three. Yeah, yeah, I would have. Because I know you would have been able to handle it. So, yeah. I would have been like, oh, well, <laughs> let's little backtrack a little bit. Maybe... <laughs> I'm not as I'm not at my peak condition as, like I also used to be, but I measured I my help. hands yesterday too. Uh, oh, how much? And uh, how much? Kenny Pickett, Kenny Pickett is getting some flack because his hands was they were like mm -hmm. the smallest in yes. I don't know how long, uh, but he it was like eight and something. Yes. I don't know. I don't. I forget the exact figure. But my mm -hmm. throwing hand, I have small hands. I'm not gonna lie. And I broke. You can look at how crooked my pinky is here. I've broken my finger, my thumb several times. But my throwing hand measured at nine inches, which is. For a guy with small, I, I think my hands are tiny, but a nine inch hand on my throwing hand, that's, that's solid. And I can grip an NFL ball, I can throw an NFL ball. Um, now, so that, that, that that's a very interesting point you made, right? Yeah. So, cause college, cause college footballs are different than NFL. I think they're a little bit inflated. So, they're slightly smaller. Slightly. Oh, they're slightly smaller. I thought they were, or maybe I was looking at the old Nerf balls, but, but they're slightly smaller, right? And if you go into the pros, does hand size really matter when gripping a football? 
Well, there are guys with big hands who, who suck. So, I mean, that, that's, not, that's, that's not everything. I right. think Michael Vick had the smallest hands um, besides Kenny Pickett uh, lately. And mm-hmm. Michael Vick didn't have any issues throwing a football. Mahomes that's... doesn't have huge hands either. The biggest hands in the, in the league, Russell Wilson. Oh, really? So, oh, hmm. I mean, he doesn't have the strongest arm, but he can, right. he, he, can he throws a pretty ball. Uh huh. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's it matters insane. to an extent. It's not right. the reason I wouldn't draft somebody, but hmm. Kenny Pickett was out there throwing with gloves. I don't want that. Really? I see Teddy Bridgewater, Teddy two gloves. I don't like the way he throws either. He throw he mm-hmm. wears a glove. I don't, I don't dig that. So not what, what so, so what the, what, what does a glove do? Like what's the, it's, what's the, it's just it's grip, grip. but I feel like you lose some touch when you're throwing with the glove. I've mm-hmm. tried it. It's not the same. Mm-hmm. I could, I couldn't play that way. Yeah. So do you think that's, that's that, that, that will hurt his draft stock? Oh, no question. It, mm. it will hurt his draft stock, but he broke all Dan Marino's records at Pittsburgh. I, yeah. I don't, I don't know. I, I didn't, I've never heard anything about him going like first round or anything. So it hurt his draft stock. Maybe I don't, but I, he'll probably get drafted around where he would have anyway. Mm-hmm. I've, I heard in the last couple of days, actually, that he, he is going to be a number one. He's going to be the first round draft pick. That would but- shock me. I, I mean, I mean, because because they're saying that if it's because besides Malik Williams, who's a hands down like amazing talent, but a project, they say that Kenny Pickett and he's one of the most NFL ready quarterbacks in the in, in this lightened quarterback draft. So and and the thing is, who knows what trades may happen to get you know when, on the day of. So it, it's going to be interesting because. Like for me, I'm 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 a big guy, so I like to see linemen and D linemen and kind of maybe <laughs> kind of run it out and kind of see what their vertical capabilities are. But it's just that bench press, as we said, uh, it's just fun to see just to throw up some weight. And I, and I don't know who has the record now for the the the, the, the you know the, the the bench press now at the combine, but it was just fun to see. That, that's the that's the only thing I look forward to is because. Running fast and everything. Everybody has a certain speed. Everybody has that. Yeah. I'm not saying that, you know, that's there. But, like, strength, you can't teach strength. It's just you you have to work on it or you just inborn. It's just one of those things. So, And some individuals just are just oxes. They're just built like ox, like Dale. They're just built like Dale. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. <laughs> no, but with, with Pickett, back to his hand size, he played in rough weather out there at Pittsburgh. Uh, you know, that they get some snowstorms and all that. And that, it never seemed to bother him so I don't know if, if if I was considering him a third round pick, I wouldn't drop him to the fourth just because the hand size. I'd still take mm-hmm. him where I plan to take him. Uh, but with uh, with a guy like Malik Willis and him being NFL ready, I don't I don't know if he's a, a, a true project where he needs like two or three years to sit. He might need one year to sit behind a veteran to learn and then come out and take over the team next year. And the thing I love about him the most is the fact that he's, I love his attitude. He, the, when he was interviewed, he was talking about, you know, you can't expect to go out there and be rookie of the year. And you know, I'm going to go out there and be an uh, MVP in my first year and all this stuff. It's a learning process. He, he said that most guys don't approach it that way. He, he's humble. Uh, some, one of his representatives put out a video of him uh, helping out a homeless guy that, you know, who knows if that was staged. I'm sure it was, who knows, but I don't, I don't, if it was, I don't put that on him. That's mm-hmm. his representation. I think he's just, I think he's a great kid coachable. Uh, he's six one like 220 or something mm-hmm. like that big stocky muscular guy he's got the arm he's definitely for me he's my first quarterback off the board no oh yeah about uh, no question about that because people people are saying that he may he may even go top five that i, I could see it because teams get desperate and you mm-hmm. know they think somebody might take him over them and they want to trade up um realistically he's a first round quarterback i don't yeah. know if any other draft he goes that high though Oh, so let's say he came out next year. Let's say yeah. he had one year. He came out next year. There's no way he's going in the first round. No way. I mean, they have other. I don't, they, I don't know who's coming out next year. Uh, so, but but just a sec. We'll be right back in just a second. We are the Talking Hats. We are back from break, and we are joined by a special guest here to talk about his NFL combine and NFL draft experience leading up to it and all that good stuff. Uh, we've joined by Eddie Royal, uh, former Broncos, Bears, Chargers receiver, went to Virginia Tech, former Hokie, uh, grew up in Northern Virginia, Westfield High School, South Lakes High School, Paul VI, superstar athlete. 
um, I'll let Harish go ahead and lead us off with the questions because I already know all this stuff. So, you know, it's just like <laughs> me just recounting my whole history again, too. So I'm like, you leaving out on your brother. You didn't throw that out there for well, people that don't know. <laughs> well, you're true. I say it well, you know, <laughs> but my, right. my baby bro, um, right. you know, I was all, always, always at all his games. That's my baby bro. I'm so proud of him and uh, proud of everything he's doing now, too. The great father I'm looking up to. Um, just trying to be like you still. <laughs> my little brother still trying to catch up. Uh, but go ahead and Harish and lead us off with the football talk man it's just like I was just like where do I start all these questions are in my head and I'm like so when when you knew that you're going to go into the NFL draft and when people started approaching you about hey do you have to prepare for this combine what was your methodology what was your thought process how did you get into mentally preparing yourself for these events for the combine it's it's crazy because it was a lot leading up to it <clears throat> so you got i'm training for uh not only for the combine and and all of that stuff but i i played in the senior bowl as well so i had that to prepare for so that kind of took my focus off of the combine and the stress of that so i was laser focused on the senior bowl and going on and putting on a good show there because i knew that if i perform well there that's going to raise my draft stock more than anything i do at the combine because that's actual football you're going one-on-one -on -one drills you're doing you're playing real ball there so uh, I was so focused on that and uh I felt like I had a good senior bowl I, I felt like I showed the coaches and everything um that I needed to show them uh that I could be an outside receiver that I could win in one-on-one -on -one situations that I was a quick learner with the playbook um and, and so all those little things go into it um because they see you for the entire week they see your work habits they see what you do after practice, they see what you're doing before practice, how quickly you're picking up the playbook, how you interact with your teammates. So the senior bowl for me was my big moment. Like yeah. uh, I had a chance to show what I could do a little bit at Virginia Tech. I, I, I wish I could have showed more as a receiver. Luckily I returned kicks and punts that I could show that I could make plays with the ball in my hand. So that helped me out a ton at Virginia Tech, but I wasn't able to show the type of receiver that I was there um completely because we had so many guys as well i mean we were a run Loaded first team um yeah we had four or five guys that played in the nfl in that receiving room alone um so we were stacked and uh and, and then you throw the shuffling in at quarterback i mean we had a lot going on yeah. um and and then we had the number one defense in the country uh majority of the time that i was there so um is it messing up on y'all in just your video, your audio. Just your fine. video, your audio is fine, yeah. Okay. Um, and so we had we had the number one defense uh, probably three out of the four years that I was there. So our, our mentality was just take care of the ball and let right. defense win the game for the most part. <laughs> Conservative uh, football, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and so um, that was my main focus of going out and really showing that I could be an every down receiver in the NFL. Um, so, so I was really laser focused on uh, dominating the senior bowl, uh, which I felt like I, I, I was able to show them what I wanted to uh, leading into the combine. Um, and my mindset was really just uh, showing these coaches uh, everything that they couldn't see on tape, you mm -hmm. know, showing them my, my, my work ethic, uh, showing them that I'm a good teammate, that I'm a willing blocker, because uh, I'm not the biggest guy in the world, but um, I'll stick my nose in there and I'll dig out the safety. I'll, I'll do the little things that it takes they, they won't show up on the stat sheet, you know? And uh, I took pride in being a good blocker. Should have, at Virginia Tech, you almost got to be if you're going to play receiver there. That's and true, and yeah. so... Uh, and then in the offense, it, you wound it, up and you got to be too, so... Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Offense, yeah. I yeah, remember one block in particular in, in, your, in your rookie season. Uh, was it rookie when you went to Atlanta? You lit up Fox. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I felt bad for him, but it was. I, I'm glad you were on the other end of it. <laughs> oh man, that was one of them things. It was yeah. like I remember growing up and, and you dream about getting a crack back like yeah. that. I probably would get fined. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In, in this NFL now, yeah. now, yeah, yeah, I would, I would have got fined big for that block. Oh. But uh, it was one of them things. You like turn around and you see the ball carrier coming to you, yeah. and he had like just peeled around to try uh -huh. to catch him. And, my eyes got big and I turn around <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, I'm going to kill this dude. It was like the last second 
I saw it was Foxworth. I was uh-huh. like, that's my dog. I was like, and then his, his eyes got big when he saw me. And I was like, it's too late, bro. It's too late. It's going down. <laughs> yeah. So I, I'll say I, I held back a little bit. I, I, I held back enough to where I didn't want to hurt him because that's my guy. But I still gave him enough to let him know I was there. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, that that that's funny. You remember that? Yeah. yeah, that was that was a highlight block for me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Fox Horse, that's that's my guy. So I didn't give him everything I had. Was he on the Broncos shortly while you were there, and then get traded? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. he was there, and yeah. uh, and and shoot, we we had some battles, and uh, he was such a smart player, though. That's uh-huh. what I always remembered about him even at his time at Maryland like this yeah. dude was it was a smart football player uh he wasn't like the biggest guy ever either yeah. um but but just very smart uh knew how to play the game never never out of position um and and I'm sure he took a lot of that from Champ Bailey being around Champ uh-huh. and um and, and so he was able to carry that on and he got paid he left it and yeah. he got paid <laughs> and uh so good for him, but he he was a heck of a football player. So yeah. I, I got lucky enough to be around some good and, dudes. But and a great broadcaster now. He's doing his thing. He is. He yeah. is. I'm proud of him. He, he's doing a great job. Well spoken. Uh, represents himself in, in a great manner. So yeah, he's doing a heck of a job post yeah. post football career. So I gotta uh, ask you, what was your what was your two twenty five bench? Now see, combine? we're we're gonna get into that part because that's, <laughs> that's, that's where that's where I was leading us just now. So. Um, when we went down to Pensacola, uh, when what academy was that you were with uh, when you were down there training? Uh, what was it? Uh, IAA or something like that. I forget. CA? Right. Or something like that. Whatever it was, we went down to Pensacola so you could uh, train the for the Andrews, combine. The Andrews Institute or whatever. Wasn't it? Uh, what's the big doctor? The, uh, uh, the doctor. Uh, yeah, Dr. James Andrews. Andrews. Yeah. James Andrews. James Andrews. Yeah, he had a spot in Pensacola. Mm-hmm. Um, they had the. They also train people in uh in uh Arizona, and so I didn't want to go to Arizona because yeah. that that place is uh was it, not overcrowded, but it was just a ton of people. I wanted to go. They it was the first year they had opened up one in Pensacola, uh-huh. and I was like, it's not gonna be as many people there. The training is gonna be just as good. Mm-hmm. So I decided to go to Pensacola to where the numbers aren't as big. They can I can really get the focus I need. Uh, and, and so I went down there, and I'm glad I did. And Christina was down there too. Uh, she was stationed down there yeah, at the time. Exactly. Our, si- our sister. So yeah, yeah. They, they set us up nice in a little uh, little hotel spot. Now we were down there with you for yeah. a little bit. Um, but the work you put in down there, I don't know if that was just combine centric focus, but you you bulked up like you got jacked. You went from like one uh, you played at like one seventy or so. I was probably I probably give me a little bit more credit. No, in college, in college, in college. <laughs> yeah, I thought it. 175, 175, maybe well, 180 ish. You got up to like 185. I, I never saw you that big. Then after your combine prep, um, you got jacked and your speed and everything. Well, I think your speed might have taken a little bit of a hit because um, you got so Man. big. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, that that's uh that's something I look back on that time and I and I just reached out to um every guy that I talked to about the combine prep uh-huh. and everything. I'm like. Don't get too big, bro. Because that was that was the thing, though. Because like I said, I wasn't that big of a guy, so it was almost I. I was trying to prove it in by showing them, like I'm a big dude. Like I can take the hits in the NFL. I can handle yeah. that. And in turn, it slowed me down. Like I was a speed guy, and, and then so, and it slowed you down. But what did you run? <laughs> no, I, I ran a four three right. nine. Four, three, I think it right. was or something like. So it slowed like, you down, but. <laughs> No, nah, see, it, it, I was so ticked off when I ran that time, uh-huh. man. I was ticked because um, through training, I was running, man, I hit four twos. I hit, yeah. and I was in a lower four threes. And I'm like, man, I'm going to kill the 40. I don't and know so, if you remember this, but at, at one point at Tech, you ran a 419. Is that a record? You see, <laughs> that has to they, be a record, at, right? I remember that. At Tech, they wouldn't, they kept making me run over and over again because they didn't believe the clock. They like, yeah. man, we're, it's wrong line. I feel it again. And they kept clocking it. And I was like, what else you want me to do? I'm like, just, and I, I know you were not fast. I know. It. So, wait, so they yeah, tired they, you they, out just to get a better score? <laughs> no, because they, they didn't believe, they didn't believe, they, 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 they didn't believe your score. They were just like, it's it's got to be wrong. And I was like, bro, how many times you want me to run this thing? Like, I'm just going to get slower because I'm tired. Like, and so I think the final they me at four two two or, or four two four or something like that, I think was the final number they gave me. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but yeah, that that was uh that was something I do if looking back on the combine stuff because I was already strong. I mean, I mm-hmm. came in a Virginia Tech strong. Yeah, broke um, the records and, for bench. Yeah, and, and so uh, the bench press, I was going to knock that out the water anyway. So it was like I didn't have to get that big, uh, but it it was like an emphasis of mine to be like I can handle these hits over the middle yeah. and all that. And in turn, it slowed me down. So that four three nine, it's like. Everybody's like, man, that's impressive. But I'm, every time I hear it, I'm like, no, like, because <laughs> in my heart, I like, I know I was so much faster than that. Yeah. So every guy I talk to, I'm like, hey, don't sacrifice your speed trying to put on a couple mm-hmm. extra pounds because if you're a speed guy, they want to see you run fast. Yeah. I'm like running a lower 40 to get you drafted higher than throwing up a couple more reps on a bench press. Absolutely. And so that mm-hmm. that's kind of what I regret a little bit um, about putting on that weight uh because it definitely slowed me down and and to be honest with you um all that training and technique that i did with the running and the like i was just fast like i I didn't have Mm. to have like the track mentality i was never like a track dude i just knew how to run fast i just i don't know what it was so i spent so much time trying to figure out how to get out of the, the stance and how to change my running form that I felt like a robot instead of just running yeah. fast. Like I've been doing my entire life. I'm sitting here trying to think about picking up my knees and, and all the turnover and all that while I'm running a 40. And when I got done, I was kind of ticked off. I was like, what am I doing? Mm. I was like, I'm yeah. already fast. Like I don't, yeah. I don't need this stuff. I was like, you right. can teach this to the, to the guys that actually need it. Like I was mm-hmm. already fast. So that, that, that's something that, uh, that I would change a little bit. Mm. I mean, um, I'm thankful for where I went, where I ended up going Heck in yeah. the draft, uh, mm-hmm. being a Bronco. And uh, and so I wouldn't change that part of it. But there, there's a few things here and there that I'm like, man, I left a little bit out there. Still. <laughs> now, speaking so, of the strength and the, and the bulk you put on, what did you do on the bench? I know. Yeah, I, I, did, I, did, uh, I did 24 <laughs> reps of, uh, 24. of 225. That's right. And um, and. It was cool, I, and that's another thing. It was like I was happy with it, like, but I was like, I could do more, man. It, it was, I wanted more. And it, you didn't look so done crazy. at the end of it. <laughs> yeah, but it's like you get in that environment, and it's like it, there's mm-hmm. so much adrenaline going on. Yeah. There's so much, so it's like you got to try to calm yourself down a little bit in a way. Um, so I, I was antsy and all that. So I, I could have threw up some more, but I was happy with 24. I think I broke the record at that point. Yeah. I think somebody mm-hmm. might have tied it or beat it at this point, but I don't know. But at that time, I I, I have done to look at what DK Metcalf that. did. I don't remember. Yeah, don't remember. It, it, and then I got my son knocking at the door. Like, <laughs> forgive me, that's Miles about to come in here. So, that's cool. Um, that's cool. Yeah, let me let me let me get the door. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. we can take a quick break and come we'll back. Take a quick break, yeah. So we're gonna uh, let him go ahead and, and let Miles. We are back from the break. We're going to jump back into our combine talk. We left off with the bench and uh, wondering if you had broken the record. I'll check that out at some point here during the day and uh, maybe revisit that later in the show. But um, as, as far as the combine experience itself, uh, just going through the process, um, meeting all the guys, some guys you probably hadn't met. I know you, you spoke highly of Jordy Nelson afterwards. Um, do you remember any other experiences of meeting players during it? And, and just your overall experience that day, the day of. Yeah, it was, uh, man, you get to meet so many guys. Um, Earl Bennett was another guy that I connected uh-huh. with when I was there. Um, I mean, shoot, it was Mario Manninghead was cool. Like, um, it was a Michigan. number of dudes there. Michigan guy. Yeah, and then, and then uh, Deshaun Jackson was there. He was he down there that. training uh, as well. And, and so it was a number of cool people that I that I met there. Um, but really, it, it's, it's crazy because you're competing against them. But you're cool. It's like yeah. it's like I want I want to run faster than you. I want to show that I'm better than you. But I'm like this dude cool too though. Like so it's like a camaraderie there though. Mm. You know, like you want to see him do well. You want to see everybody like you encouraging everybody. Um, and, and that's kind of the dynamic in the league. Um, people are like it's like you see fans and they want you to like hate the guy that you're playing against or hate the team. And it's like. That's my homeboy over there. Like, like I just said with, with like Foxworth, it was like, yeah. ah, I'm gonna hit this guy, but I'm not about to knock him out. Like yeah. he's got a family to take care of as well. Yeah. And you just like, it's like our, our, 
I, a lot of times fans don't understand it. Like, man, we all know each other from training with one another. Yeah. And this is Miles, and he just hey, said hello. <laughs> hey, Miles. Uh, and uh, and so that that's the dynamic. It was at the combine. It was competitive, yeah. but at the same time, it was like a family type atmosphere because uh, I mean, we all understood and, and appreciated the work that we had all put in to get to this point. Uh, because there's there's an elite group of guys there, right? Uh, they, yeah. they get invited to the combine, so we all understood the work that was put in to get them there. So we respected their journey and uh, and sharing stories, man. Like it, 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 everybody's from a different part of the world, but it, you all got that one thing in common, like the the work ethic it took to get there, yeah. the grind, um, whatever the motivation was, you know. And, and just hearing people's motivations, like it, it's different, you know. And, yeah. and as you know, mine and ours was taking care of our mother, right? Yeah. Just, we got to take care, take care of her. And so the, the crazy resemblance and hearing that uh, so many people um, that I came across at the combine, that was the same sentiment. Like, man, I got to take care of my mom. Like I, I didn't see her bust her butt for our family and the sacrifice that she made. Like, so I got, I got to do that for her. So yeah, I'm sure people have that, similar stories, but nobody can touch ours. Seven. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> by herself seven by herself so that that's a story yeah. but um, you spoke you yeah. mentioned djx i didn't know y'all trained together um mm -hmm. down in, in florida um i know you beat his 40 time at the combine but were y'all were y'all having battles uh down there while y'all were training no i see dj <laughs> dj so funny man dj was so fast um this dude did I? That DJ was rolling. I don't know that I beat his. 40, you beat his forty times. He, he ran like a four four one. He remember. the fastest. He's like the fastest dude I've seen on the football field. Like mm -hmm. you talk about tracking the ball over your shoulder. He's as yeah. good as it gets. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. that 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 talent right there. I'm like he could have been a, a, a all star baseball player. Like the yeah. mm -hmm. the way that he tracks that ball is unheard of, man. And, and his football speed, I don't care what he ran on that track, man. His right. football speed is just different. Yeah. And and so he was down there. So DJ was funny because uh it was like he had his he was training, but he had his own special like trainers <laughs> down there. Like it was like I'm here, but I'm 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 gonna do my own thing. Like y'all and he took that 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 sentiment. He was like, I'm fast already, like y'all not gonna yeah. mess me up. And so he understood that, he understood his strength. He was like, I don't care nothing about no bench press. Like, yeah, I don't I'm even think he seventy, whatever it was. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I'm looking at him like DJ. You might want to put on some weight, but he's like, <laughs> man, yeah. He didn't care. He knew yeah. his thing was speed, yeah. and, and that worked for him. And it's still working for him at yeah. 34, 35 years old. He's still flying by people, and yeah. so that tells you, like, man, speed kills, and mm -hmm. he's one of the fastest to ever do it. Yeah. So yeah. Now, going into the draft, so. I remember the day of, uh, we were sitting in the hotel room waiting for the call. Um, you, you mentioned before that Shanahan didn't really show any interest in you leading up in, yeah. into the draft. Um, explain that whole process. I remember the details of it, but just uh, get into that and how he approached that and how he you know, and wound up uh, being able to pick you. Yeah, it was, it, it was crazy because you, um, when you're at the combine, you, you got teams that request interviews from you. And so, um, you, you all of a sudden assume that, okay, these are the teams that are probably going to draft me because they want to they want to get a hands-on look. They want to meet you. They want to see the type of guy you are, um, especially because if they didn't coach you at the Senior Bowl, the Senior Bowl, the coaches are there. They're hands-on with you. And we had the Raiders – we had Lane Kiffin. Mm -hmm. We had the Raiders staff, um, and he was there. <laughs> he was Lane was funny. Uh, he was there, so <laughs> – uh, Lane was like, he's like, he's like, I, I don't care about, about what y'all do out there. He's like, if I gotta motivate y'all, then y'all in the long, wrong locker room. He like, I, I don't care. He's like, I got a job. He's like, y'all need to go, <laughs> go show out. So he's like, I'm not gonna give you some motivational speech. Yeah. He's like, if I have to do that, then shoot, <laughs> we got the wrong guys. In he seems like a character. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. So we was all looking around like, oh, all right, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Cause you think you're gonna get some like rah rah speech yeah. from the coach, and he like. He's like shit, I don't, I don't give a damn. Like I'm probably <laughs> good. Y'all gotta figure it out. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that was that was lame. But mm -hmm. yeah, so at the combine, um, you go and uh, 
the, the teams that call you in and, and and they ask you an assortment of questions, man, they're all, they want to know your family background. They want to know everything. And so uh, a lot of it's not even about football. Sometimes they just, just want to know the person because they're like, yeah. man, this is a million dollar investment. Millions yeah. of dollars are about to pay this guy. We need to know that he's not going to go mess it up on some off the field stuff. So a lot of it, my prep was all in football. Like I'm thinking that I got to go, I'm on the board, I'm doing coverages, I'm, I'm making sure that I know uh, blitz pickups. I, like I'm, I'm learning everything with the offensive line supposed to do with blitzes and right. as a receiver, I, knowing hot routes. Like there's so many things that run through your mind. And then you get there and they're like, tell me about Pearl, <laughs> and, which is our mother. And yeah. I'm sitting there, I'm like, what? <laughs> you don't know about my mother? And like she's a school bus driver. I'm like, what else do you want to know? And it was crazy. They're asking about siblings. They're asking about everything. What kind of car you drive? Like, what's going to be the first thing you purchase when you sign your contract? Like, they wanted to know how you thought in that aspect of it. How would you answer so those questions? Like, <laughs> man, it, it was just open and honest. I, I gave them my authentic self, and I, I felt like because uh, when somebody's BSing you, you can always tell. Yeah. You know, you could you, you could see somebody who's not true, being true to themselves. Um, just the way that they answer it. A lot of, a lot of people get there and they're robotic and they're just. So I just, I just had to give, I had nothing to hide. I was proud of my story. I was proud of everything that, uh, that, that got me to that point and, and how we grew up. Um, it, it, it wasn't the easiest, but I was proud of that because it, it instilled my work ethic. It instilled everything that got me to that point. Absolutely. And so you got to answer those questions open and honest, um, because if you're lying nine times out of 10, they already know the answer to mm -hmm. the question they're asking. Right. Yep. Yeah. And, and so, uh, and so, that that's the thing that so all of these teams are all these interviews that I got to do and I'm and I'm looking at the I'm looking at the teams and where they're where they're they're drafting and I'm like okay I might go here I might go there so in my mind I'm like dang so Denver did not call me in for an interview mm -hmm. and so Denver wasn't even on my radar at all so I I, yeah. I didn't think about the Broncos at all I remember once I got drafted I looked back on it and I was like man. Cause they throw you in like this big conference room and then like there's coaches walking around. You don't know who they are. They just have on a t-shirt, maybe a hat or something that, that tells you that they're with a team or something that they're in the NFL, but you don't know who they are. And so I'm in this big conference room. We're all in there mingling, talking. And uh, one of the coaches from the Broncos comes up and he's talking to me like, Hey, I'm from DC. And I'm, I'm like, Oh, what's up? Like, yeah. He's I know like, who uh, it was. He's like, yeah, I'm not. I'm not gonna put him out there. <laughs> yeah, me neither. Yeah. I, I thought about saying his yeah. name, but I, I won't yeah. leave it out. I know. Who it was is. just funny because we we talking and he was like, uh, "Man, do you go to Love much?" And Love was a, <laughs> was a nightclub. <laughs> yeah. yeah, as you know, you know. Uh, if, you, if you know, you know, right? Yeah. <laughs> you see, like you be you be in love, and I'm like. At that point, I was like, man, I don't really go out like that. I don't really hit the city that much. I don't really go to clubs like that. And I was being honest. It was like, I know what you're talking about, but that's not really my scene like that. And so we we talk about that, like little stuff around the city. And, and that was it. Boom, he got out of there. Yeah. And so um, he was from the Broncos, right? And, and so I it, it was a quick two-second conversation, like in and out. Um, and that was the, the only interaction I had with the Broncos. So um, come draft day, I'm watching all the teams. And, uh, and Philly had come to work me out. And mm. so I got a call from the Eagles before. Like you get – sometimes teams will call you during a draft and be like, uh -huh. hey, if you're still there, we're going to grab you, right? And so Philly had called me and was like, um, hey, if you're there, we're going to take you, Right. And I'm looking, Philly was probably six picks down at this point, I, I believe, if I'm telling a story right, I hope I'm right. Um, and so I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm going to end up in Philly. And so I'm like, I'm cool with Philly. I like Philly. Andy Reid, um, head coach of the Texans was there. Cully, he was, uh, uh -huh. well, they just, they just fired him. So yeah. He was a receivers coach there at Philly at the point. And he had come to work me out. Side story, he, he didn't get to work me out because <laughs> – because I pulled my hamstring <laughs> messing with <laughs> messing with a coach. Look, a coach had I'm getting sidetracked, I know. No, no, no. Coach, no, go for it. A yeah. coach had come to work me out at tech. And mm -hmm. he was like, 
we're not really going to work out. I just want to talk to you. So we're at the field and, and he brought a punter out there. And I'm like, I'm not working out. What is this punter out here for? And he like, ah, oh, you don't gotta, you don't gotta warm up or nothing or stretch. I just want to see how you track the ball. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm like, all right. And, and, and the punter, he didn't warm up or nothing. So the dude started kicking the ball and the ball is like all <laughs> over the place, oh, right? No. Looking at him. But I, and I gotta catch it because I'm like, I don't wanna look bad. Like yeah. I can't track the ball. So I'm running around and I'm like, dude, should I stretch? And he's like, no, no, we're not gonna be out here long. Just, like I said, I just wanna see you track it. So I'm like, man, I need to stretch, right? <laughs> and so the next thing, dude, this freaking punter kicked the ball way, <laughs> way over to the right. <laughs> and as soon as he kicked it, I like, I like looked at the coach. I like gave him a look because the guy boomed it over there high. Mm -hmm. I just look at the coach and I'm like, damn, I gotta go get it. <laughs> so I was like, I went on a full sprint to go catch the ball and I just feel my hamstring. Mm. And I'm like, oh my God. That's the worst. And I too. get over there. Bro, and I and I get over there, I catch the ball and I just slam it. And I I look I look at this coach and I'm like, y'all better not draft me. I, got, <laughs> I was ticked off at this daggone coach because I didn't have pro day yet, right? Because mm -hmm. my pro day was coming up. Yeah. And so, and that's why they don't they don't do the individual workouts before pro day anymore because stuff mm -hmm. like that. So mm -hmm. I'm ticked off at this dude. And when I pulled it, when you pull a hamstring, you yeah. know how yes. bad it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's and I and I pulled it and it was bad. And I was and I slammed the ball and I just looked at this coach and I was just like. Because yeah. in my head, I'm like, that could cost me so much money right yeah. there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm ticked off. And the, and the guy kind of sees it on my face, and then especially the look I gave him. Um, and, and so that that kind of wrapped up. He was like, all right, we're good here. I was like, you're damn right we're done. I was like, <laughs> I was like this, is, this is over. And so Cully had come to Tech like a day or two later to work me out. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't do anything. Right, and he right. was he was kind of, he was a little disappointed, and I wanted to show because I really liked Philly, and right. I, I wanted to show him what I could do, and I I just couldn't. So I ended up missing my pro day as well, which was after the combine, which was my chance to show I was faster than the four three nine right. that I ran as well. Mm -hmm. And so I was ticked off about that as well. And so that that happened. So I didn't get to I didn't get to do all of that. So um, yeah, back to the the whole Denver thing. Uh, I love Philly, and so they're like, "Hey, we might if you're there, we're going we're going to draft." And I'm like, "Cool, I know them, I feel comfortable with them. I'm be Eagles right down the road too. Y'all yep. could drive <laughs> to the games. Yeah. Damn, it's easy." So during the draft, we're sitting there, and I'm sitting there watching. I'm getting antsy because in my mind, I was like, "Man, I want to go late first. Like, hopefully, like I want to go late first. Like the Giants was there. I was like, "Ooh, I know the Giants like me a lot." They had told me because the Giants was like, "Shoot, Mike." grab you the late person i'm like shoot okay <laughs> yeah. you, you know you don't know i was like man i came from tech i ain't put up a ton of numbers at tech mm -hmm. we didn't throw the ball so i'm like should i go late first cool and uh and so they passed i think they picked kenny phillips to safety out of uh miami and uh and so we get there and philly's coming up i was like i'm gonna be an eagle and then uh, i get a 303 number pop up on my phone like i remember I who this is so we, we were all sitting in the hotel boat. room, Tarish, waiting for the call mm -hmm. to come in. We didn't know when so, it was going to come. Yeah, because that, that's what I wanted to ask. Yeah. Is like, like when you're sitting there, the nerves must be like, I, I, like I feel you like can't we even were, imagine. I feel like we were all just sitting there, just you know, as just, a family all together, just waiting for the call, not nervous so, or anything. So yeah. Do you guys have any food and drinks, or is it just like a room full? Of just snacks? I don't think we was drinking we just hanging nothing. Out. Yeah, I think no. we was just hanging out. Um, yeah. and uh you got random people calling you, right? right. And so um, I'm like, man, what is what is going on? Who Who is this 303? And I'm thinking like somebody, some friend calling me or something. So I pick up the phone, I'm like, <laughs> you, know, you, don't, you don't know that that's the call. So you're not even right. that excited. I pick up the phone. Then it was Coach Shanahan, right? And he was like, uh, he was like, it's, it's Mike Shanahan. I was like, yo, <laughs> your heart dropped. you like, it's Mike, right? <laughs> yeah. He's like, man. And so I'm on the phone. He's like, uh, how would you like to be a Denver Bronco? And I'm like, you damn again, yeah, coach. Is like, yeah. <laughs> and and then it started to click to me. I'm like, where the hell is Denver? I'm like, I, I'm like, Colorado. I'm like, I ain't never been over there. All I know about is mountains. I'm like, and so I'm like, damn, I'm gonna be a Bronco. And then you see it happen on the TV, and then you're just like, it's a surreal moment. And you're just like, wow. Then it just hits you, and I'm like, 
where the hell is Denver? I'm like, because I didn't know nothing about over there. <laughs> right. And I'm just like, damn. And so I'm like, going to the middle of nowhere, right? And I'm like, oh my God. I was like, I, I knew about the Broncos because Chris liked uh, John Elway yeah. and all that, <laughs> Rod Smith and Terrell and, and all of them, mm-hmm. TD and all those guys. And so I remember um, him loving them. And so I was, I knew about the Broncos that way and they had won Super Bowls or whatever. So I was like, all right, cool. But I didn't, I didn't picture myself as right. a Bronco. Yeah. It's crazy because you playing a Madden game and all that. You put yourself <laughs> in a different uniform. Right? <laughs> How you look in that uniform. And uh, I never picked the Broncos out. And, and, uh, and so that was pretty cool. And, and uh, I remember, <laughs> I, I'll tell a side story. I remember uh, getting there and I landed. And anybody that's been to Denver, you get there so flat. When you land it, like there's yeah. nothing, there's nothing. The airport is and on I the plane. Get there. Yeah. yeah, and I get there and I was like, oh my God. I was like, my worst nightmare is coming true. I was like, I'm in the middle of nowhere. It felt Just like so I you know, we got a minute and a half. Yeah, it felt like I was in like Idaho or somewhere or Iowa or something. I'm like, oh my God. But then you drive into the city and it's a completely different field than yeah. what you expect. Like yeah. the best city ever. Like I couldn't mm-hmm. couldn't have been drafted to a better place. The fan base was awesome. The coaches, the my teammates, like man, I got lifelong friends from uh from that team with Coach Shanahan, who I wish we could have kept on for mm-hmm. uh a, for years to that come changed because everything. we were building. That would have yeah, changed we, everything. We, yeah. We, we were building, we were a younger team. Um, our defense needed to come along. We had the number one offense in the league um, mm-hmm. my rookie year, and, and the defense was a little bit behind. We had some good players. We had a lot of injuries, but uh, that defense was, was going to get going, and we would have been a good team. So this forward. is going to cut us off here in about 30 seconds. It's going to be a hard out, too. I don't know if you wanted to join us for another segment, but if not, um, what are you thinking about that? No, nah, that, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, let's, let's keep it going. That's fine with me. Cool. Okay. So I'll cut cool. this off here then, and I'll, I'll send you the new link, and we'll uh, pick right back up. Talking hats, we're going to take a quick break here. We'll be right back.